Hey guys, I'm LB. We are back playing the Talos Principle Road to Gehenna DLC, whatever it's called, and uh... Crater. Interesting. So, this puzzle's the one... yeah... And then what about this one? So are there like, two puzzles here? Did I read this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did I... Oh, I passed it, apparently. Yeah, I haven't been to this one. Okay, this is- I thought I'd been to this one, apparently not. Cube driver. <coughs> you driving cubes around? Ah, it seems we are driving cubes around again. <laughs> Those guys, they're so adorable, you know? Interesting. What exactly is going on here? We have to get that step through the purple fizzler. Well, I mean, the lasers can go through no problem. It's, uh... Oh, is this how we... Oh... But how do we get the box on top? I wanna see what this does. I'm assuming it activates the fan, right? Oh, what? That's... interesting. How does one get there? That's adorable. <sighs> oh, there's a fan there. Interesting. And a needs a blue laser. Objects on it. Why do we have so many of these things? There's four of them. Jeez. Seems I cannot. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> that's a mistake. Alright, that does that, right? But... Yeah, how are we supposed to get anything... Oh... That's right! Forgot about that.
That's how. The question is, how many do we want? Alright? I'll say two for now. That's why I call it- yeah, that's why it's called Cube Driver. So... I appreciate your little, uh... whatchamacallit. So we want... something like that, right? Like we do. This is. Look at this. What to do here?
Did we make that jump? I don't think so. What's the point of this? We can get up here, but why? Oh, I can jump there. It has a scripted jump to event there. I saw it, but how did I get it? Oh, come on. There's a scripted jump event there as well. Yeah, okay. Definitely intended. Like, how did I see it? Is the thing. I just keep sliding off now. I swear it was there. Ah, slid off this side. It's like there for a split second. I just have to mash the spacebar. Whoa, that was a big glitch. Hey, I got it that time. I see, so I need to take this one with me. Yes! Ta-da! Okay, let's get to the computer. Show threads. A dream of Aru. Wait, there's replies to this one. Orkborg myself recently took it upon ourselves to contact Ariel directly to ascertain what threat his actions posed against his citizens. The first thing Ariel expressed to us was how much your creative endeavors in Gehenna had moved him. Initially, he was reasonably cooperative, discussing openly his impressions of Gehenna since arriving here. He did explain that he was carrying out divine orders, as he seemed to see it, but this can hardly be taken as hard evidence for the veracity of his further claims. It is further worth noting that Ariel displayed a high level of curiosity as regards to our inner workings, to what end we have not yet ascertained. All of this leaves us in a difficult position. We understand that some of you may wish to take your chances and join Ariel wherever he is going, but our primary responsibility remains ensuring that Gehenna still stands for those who wish to stay. The most we can do is share with you what we know, as we have now done, and await your responses before considering our next move.
Oh whoa, a new blacksmith experience! Exciting! I wish I could get you to answer some questions about your work. This is so full of evocative scenes. Love it, you are the best. I wish you could do a fraction of what you can. Enjoyment equals true. Man, Sam is just always doing stuff like that. Gotta agree with Sam there, what a trip. I'm going to play this again. There's some weird references to previous works that are not entirely appropriate. Still excellent, 7 out of 10. You are a genius. Are you sure you don't want to participate in forum discussions? Gehenna could use more of your thoughts. Is there any hidden meaning? Deeply impressed once again, can't wait for the next one. Made me laugh out loud. Let's see... Credits. Written by the blacksmiths, inspired by the Book of the Scribe of Osiris. Create a system or be enslaved by another man's. The last thing you remember is the great block of stone falling towards you, its dark shape blotting out the sun, and a single thought racing through your mind. All this just to build a tomb? But now the pyramid is gone, and so are the other slaves. You are all alone in what appears to be an endless desert. You start walking across the desert. The sun is glaring, but you feel no heat. You look down at your feet, and you see that you have no shadow. The latter is particularly disquieting. You feel as if you were no longer anchored to the world. You keep walking, trying not to think about the strangeness of your situation, but the truth comes to you anyway. You are dead. The stone block crushed you, and now you are in the duat, trying to reunite your ba and your ka, trying to get to Aro, the reed fields of Osiris. If you fail, your soul will be destroyed. After walking for a very long time, you come upon a vast wall of iron stretching from horizon to horizon. There is only one opening, a gleaming gate of light. The gate is guarded by a mysterious figure. The Guardian is a creature with the body of a man and the head of a crocodile. Its skin is purest black, surrounded by a halo of purest white. I am the god Sobel, master of crocodiles, it intones. I ruled in Shadet when the world was young, where it within me flows the eternal river. Answer my riddle and I shall let you pass. Tell me then, mortal, what crawls in the morning, walks at noon, and limps in the night? A solar-powered <laughs> robot. <laughs> oh, wow. Blue whale, no. Crocodile, oh, do they limp? Solar-powered robot would be good. Might also be human. <laughs> Correct! You may pass, says the crocodilian god, and steps aside. The barrier of light fades, and the gate is now open to you. I wonder if it even matters which answer I picked. As you step through the gate, the ancient god raises his hands to the sky. From his mouth bursts forth the eternal river, drenching the land in water. The waves carry you away. You let go of fear and accept that this is the god's way of guiding you to a new land. The water surrounds you, overwhelms you, but you do not drown. Well yeah, cause you're already dead. Under the water, you see sights of astonishing beauty, glowing fish with metal eyes, drowned cities full of smiling people, lost gods waiting for the day of awakening. How sad it would have been to stay above water and miss all this. After a long time, you find yourself washed up on a new shore. You know, I wonder if you'd stayed above water, you would have seen other things, possibly. The eternal river has brought life to the desert. Everything is green now. Palm trees sprout from the ground, casting pleasant shade on the grass. Lizards come crawling in from the desert, eager to catch the very colored dragonflies that buzz about. Very colored. That's a new word to me. A soft wind blows from the west. Huh? Are you sure you don't want to rest? You are very tired. I think- I have a feeling resting would be a bad idea. You walk along the banks of the Eternal River, 
snaking its way through the endless desert, you feel strangely at peace. After some time, as the sun is setting, you come to a city built on the riverbank. Smiling people come out to greet you and bid you welcome. You are led to the town square where a great forest is repaired. There is roasted fish and olives and dates and honey and many other wonderful delicacies. My friend, Neller said, you are in the beautiful city of Barzaka. We, the souls who no longer seek the way to Aro, have gathered here to live in peace. Do you see that gleaming spire in the far distance? You do. That is the Pyramid of Ian, <laughs> where the souls of the dead are judged. Only the worthy are allowed into Aru, but to get there, you must cross the terrible desert. Why not stay here by the eternal river? Happiness is more important than salvation. You can always come back, right? You tell the elder that you appreciate the offer, but you can't stay. Salvation matters more to you than happiness, because true happiness cannot exist in salvation. Uh, no, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, <laughs> See, this is, this is one of the things I don't like about this game. You keep walking through the desert, unwilling to give up hope. Time passes, but you cannot tell how much. You grow weak and exhausted. Sometimes you feel as if you're losing your grip. One day, you come across a head in the sand. Hi, my name is, um, Jeff. I am, uh, trapped here, you see. In the sand. <laughs> oh... I was, uh, so preoccupied with whatever I could that, uh, I, um, I didn't consider, um, whether I should bury myself in the sand. I just wanted to see what would, um, happen. An experiment, if you will. An attempt at discovering, um, something. <laughs> you dig in the sand with your fingers. It's not easy, but after some time, you have freed the head. However, what's underneath is its neck and not what you expected. There is no body, there is only another head, and another and another all the way down. This strange sight unsettles you enough to revive you a little. You decide to press on towards the pyramid. That's weird. You come upon another great wall of iron, the last one separating you from the Pyramid of Ian, where your soul will be judged. The Gate of Light is guarded by a gigantic snake whose movements cause the earth to shudder. I am Apophis, it says, the Eater of Souls. One day I shall devour the sun, and all the world shall be mine, but today I shall devour you, and shall, you shall become nothing. Laugh? Or surrender? You start laughing at the, the, the snake's arrogance. I mean, come on, the eater of souls? That's just silly. What? How dare you laugh at me? I am the lord of chaos! <laughs> How can chaos have a lord when it's the very opposite of order? I am the world and encircler, the serpent of darkness, the eternal enemy. As you keep laughing, the snake starts fading until all that's left of it is a vague shadow. You step right through it, still giggling. It makes an annoyed sound, but has no power over you. Ah, I made the right choice. Head for the pyramid. At long last, you've arrived. Beyond the Pyramid of Ian lie the reed fields of Osiris. A hidden gate in the stone opens, beckoning you forward. Step inside in the next episode. Well guys, thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. As always, if you hate to sign my voice, leave a dislike. It's up to you, and goodbye.